Yesterday, we all saw what happened inside the parliament when President Cyril was about to give his speech to the nation. The use of force should not be something that we have to tolerate, especially inside the parliament. Yes, the use of intimidation should not be something that we have to applaud for and say that yes, they deserve it. No. In this video, I want us to have a conversation about what happened in the parliament yesterday. But before I get to give you my analytics or my point of view on different matters that happened yesterday in the parliament, I am inviting you first to watch this video when the president of EFF they had been kicked out from the parliament, what he had to say, then I'll come back for more analysis. The president, anywhere, anywhere in this country and in the world, by the way, the only time the president does not have protectors is in this parliament. He enters, seats amongst members of parliament. So why should they not be a threat when they are sitting with him? And then become a threat when they go to him when he's on stage. The, the president requires no protection in parliament. I will never, and the president knows that himself, that I will never harm him. Because you ought to look at between the two, who is the most powerful? I've got no tools to harm the state. The president is more powerful than me. So you can't look at me and look at the president and say, this guy constitutes a danger to the president. The president does not belong here. This is my workplace here. I work here. I've got the right to be here and be anywhere in this principle. I work here. When we are seated with him uh, at, a, uh, at, the, at the floor of the chamber there, he can't see our hands. No one can see our hands. They are not sure if seated next to him I've got a knife or I've got a gun. But on the stage, my hands were visible, holding a placard. Since when holding a placard in a peaceful manner constitutes a threat? Because everywhere else where you are suspected to be a threat, you are asked to raise your hands where we can see them. My hands were visible with a placard. Why are the guns allowed inside parliament? That's what all of us should be asking because the protection of the president has got nothing with touching me why are they touching me if they are protecting the president they were supposed to go and build a wall around the president and wait for me until i approach and want to break that wall no they don't protect the president they come to me that's not the protection of the president it's a harassment of members of parliament Beggy is seeking for suffer <clears throat> Cabinet uh, reshuffle is imminent, and that's why he's doing the most stupid things. Semi illiterate minister of police who knows nothing except to just go around saying a lot of nothing, which results in no results. The GBV is high, the levels of crime are too high. The only thing he can praise is harassment of colleagues in parliament. He's a certified fool. He's a stupid. Should celebrate what those members of uh, the police did inside there. Thank you. Before I even get to comment on what you just watch, I need us to be in the same page. At least I want us to agree on one thing, regardless of what could be your political parties or who you are supporting as individuals. But here we have to agree on one thing when I said that. The use of force inside the parliament should not be something that we have to tolerate. The use of intimidation on the parliamentary members should not be something that we don't even have to discuss about. Because if we have to let this happening inside the parliament, then you must know that that parliament is going to be even more useless to the people of South Africa. Because each and every member sitting there, they had mandate from the people of South Africa. The EFF or any members who had misbehaved yesterday, they did not put themselves there in the parliament. It is not a favor 
which the parliament decided on one of the night to say that okay these people they can be here they are there because they have the mandate from people of south africa who had put it their trust in them so these people whether we like it or not they have some people out there who they will have to be held accountable for therefore they deserve at least that small respect in the name of peoples who have sent them in that parliament regardless of whatsoever we can get to accuse the behaviors of the eff members and everything but using such kind of force inside the parliament that it is the beginning of uh, killing democracy and the trying to give bed to the dictatorship which will have to take place for the rest of our life and that's not something that we have to tolerate therefore we have all to be in the same page to condemn what have happened yesterday guys we have at least to know that what is happening inside the south africa parliament we are not the only people to experience those kind of behaviors these are things that are happening in many countries in different parliaments around the world and trust me at the end of the day they still let democracy take place because that is how democracy works in america joe biden they called him by this lady saying that you are talking bullshit yet this lady she walked out of that house freely no one had put hands on her no one forced her no one tried to arrest her or anything that is how you get to see how democracy gets to reign now what we're experiencing here i don't know who is this lady but have see what they have just happened here because when you see at her she was not even on the stage yes she was standing on a seat raising up a message in her hands ramaphosa must step down and see how brutally she was removed from the parliament see how these three ladies have to kick her out from that parliament without even asking her and even if you get to see when the madam speaker ask the parliament i mean to ask the the even when you get to see madam speak of the parliament yesterday when she calls the names of people supposed to leave the house i don't think this lady name was among those people beside that let us try to focus at least about the whole procedure according to the rules or should i say the law of the parliament a member can be asked to leave the house or the parliament after they have received three warnings three warnings now in this video when you get to see there is no way madam speaker had the given three warnings to people that he had mentioned the name as he did with honorable zungula because she only calls the names in less than 30 seconds she asked them to leave the house just like that and the next things before even she had to ask them to leave the house she had put a condition saying that she's no longer gonna allow any point of order she have clause she have give a ruling and that is it the old person who's allowed to speak in the parliament that would be mr president Cyril Ramaphosa. okay fine but still the same woman we get to see her giving allowing the point of order from the opposition party which was uh, from a da by uh, john Vulsgate. gate he had to allow him to give his point of view about what had happened inside the parliament why she had a rule saying that no more point of order yet that ruling apparently it was only concerning the eff well guys what we note here is that I said it before, I'm going to repeat this again. 
Madam Speaker, as she arrived inside the parliament, she was well prepared and she was well instructed that these people, they are up to something and we don't have time to face another embarrassment. Now that we are having a lot of things in, the, in, in our site, things like a, a load shedding, unemployment, food crisis, uh, uh, pricing increasing, all these things that they've been mentioning here and then. So it was not going to be easy for the President of the Republic to face another embarrassment inside the Parliament, whereby some opposition parties, they have to come and stand on his way. Because he have this explanation that he need to give people about this crisis that they've been facing. So, they had already instruct Madam Speaker on what to do just in case if this happened. That is what had made her become very strict. Because when you get to listen to her saying this, of South Africa, Mr. David Mabuza. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Take your seat, Mr. President. Honorable members, seeing that you are determined to ensure that we do not proceed with this sitting, once more I request you, those of you who do not want to be part of these proceedings today should actually leave the house. You guys, I can see you are more determined. Therefore, I'm asking you to leave the house. That already, it is an intimidation. Yes, that is how you get to intimidate somebody. You impose your leadership on them. You impose something, what you want them to do. You impose it. You don't ask. Because when she entered the house, she's supposed to follow the rule. But instead, she starts imposing the rule. And for that, it had really make things turn around in a other different ways that uh, the people of the EFF could not be able also to tolerate on their side because they felt like their right has been violated already. Now, guys, let's back to the video which uh, the president of EFF uh, spoke about. Because it is very important to get to understand that, to, uh, to know that what happened yesterday in the parliament, the world was watching us from far to get to see what is going on inside the parliament. And now that Malema came out and talking about those words, saying that the parliament is now imposing the dictatorship and trying to protect an individual. The parliament is forgetting on how to assume its responsibility and follow the rules of the house. Instead, it's trying to protect an individual all just because of the political party that we belong to. And he went on to say that we are now living in a dictatorship country. Well, that message only, it can have a very big impact on the image of South Africa, democracy. The image that the world knows out there of South Africa. People will start now, be more curious to know what next will happen. Because for me, honestly speaking, I'm not supporting any person here. I'm just trying to stick on the law. Guys, this so-called EFF, they've been doing this not for the first time. We saw it. They start doing these things since Jacob Zuma, right? Why can't you apply the same strategy that you used to have to do back in days? Ask them to leave. Give them the first warning. The second one, the third one, if they don't respect, read what the law says and ask them to leave the house. So that at least, even if you have to send the parliament security, no one will have to come and blame you for that. But what have just happened yesterday, you can 
give any kind of reason. Some people are like, no, um, that was kind of like a threat to the president. Well, the threat to the president of a person who did not even carry a firearm in their hands. Look at this uh, picture. That is the president of EFF, Julius Malema. What is he holding in his hand? Now look at that position. The way they are, I mean, the way they were struggling. Do you think it, it seemed to be like someone was going to attack the president? I don't think so. And I don't think that someone like Malema and uh, with his people, they can go and do something like that because they know the consequences of it. They know the consequences of it. I heard some people also saying that no, why they could not do it while they were sitting in, the, in, in their seats. No, dude. This is a parliament. And those people that are parliamentaries, they are within their right to prostate, to strike inside the parliament. What they have done is not something they can, done, they can do it outside there. Because the moment they try to do it outside there, they might get arrested, but not inside the parliament. Inside the parliament, they can be uh, um, they can be forbidden, like trying to stop them, but not by using force. They can get a warning, and that did not happen. So whether we like it or not, regardless of our political agenda, regardless of our political party, what happened yesterday is something that deserves to be condemned. In both ways, whether it is from the EFF side, whether it is from the parliament side, it's something to be condemned. The EFF, I think, they should find another proper way to prostate if it happened that they are not in these things of uh, allowing the president to speak. There's many ways to prostate about it. For an example, like uh, they are calling of a, a March 20th uh, shut, national shutdown. That is another way of demonstrating that you are unhappy with what is happening in the country. You can prostate. You can call for the national shutdown. It is within your right. That is fine. But trying also to rush a state uh, straight to the uh, stage where the head of the state is sitting, that it was a little bit too much also on their side. And we do condemn that as well. But we do not like the fact that the parliament have to allow the uh, law enforcement inside the parliament already because when you get to see them they were in already they were ready for the action who we'll give them the right because according to the constitutions the court had said they are not allowed to be inside the parliament the only people who are allowed to be inside the parliament are those security guards that you get to see in a, a brown or white uh, article a brown color uniform that the ones who are allowed to be in that is the reason why they employ some men who can be able to force other men out and will be they employ some women who can have to deal with women but bringing the police inside kind of like we are in sudan where there's rebellions whereby the president is even afraid to stand on the stage because anything can happen that is a very serious intimidation to democracy of this country. I hope this kind of behaviors won't happen again the next time. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. I'll see you again in our next video where we'll get to discuss about the press conference of the president of EFF, Julius Malema, about the whole things. And it is for the first time that uh, after the state of nation, the EFF they are not uh, i mean they they are not in the parliament and the following day they have to call for the press conference and i'm afraid to say that in this press conference you end up finding out that they're not even going to debate on this nation i mean uh, state of nation uh, address so let's wait and see what's going to happen but for now continue to be yourself be good be kind don't leave without giving us your thumbs up we really do appreciate follow us in our social media subscribe to the channel Drop your comment down below. Tell us also what you think about this. Then uh, we'll really have a look on that. I'll see you again very soon. Ciao, ciao.